Hello, this is Darren Craddock from Enter Health Botanicals with The Daily Dose. Today I'd like to talk to you about a very important, crucial subject in my mind for the health of the individual from cradle to grave, and that is the subject of beneficial bacteria. Beneficial bacteria, or intestinal flora as it's often known, uh, actually is not just in the intestines. It goes all the way from the mouth down to the anus and is on our skin throughout our body uh, and protects the basically mucosal membranes as well as aids in digestion and absorption of nutrients, keeps inflammation at bay and many, many, many more things in addition to, in addition to certain strains that will protect us from radiation and chemical and uh, environmental toxins. So there are many, many roles. We're not going to get into all of those in this particular video of the Daily Dose. But I'm certainly going to talk about some of the information that I think will help you understand the implications of beneficial bacteria in your short and long-term health. By the time that a baby is three years old, that baby has a hundred trillion, yes, trillion with a T, different microbes in their system. That's ten times more than the number of cells we have in our bodies. Yeah, we have about 10 trillion cells, give or take a million. <laughs> Sounds huge, doesn't it? Talking millions and trillions, but that's basically the fact of the matter. Now, a 2007 study done, uh, commissioned by the NIH, National Institutes of Health, worked with 800 different strains of bacteria and looked at their implications for health. Uh, that's 800 strains. We have more than those in our bodies, but they looked at some of the most predominant ones. And they found that uh, there were huge effects on health of those beneficial bacteria. And so it's something we cannot ignore. It's something we must take into account when we're looking at our health, both short and long term. Now, one of the key things that came out from that study, which was I've, I've certainly talked about before, before that study even came about, it's something I've known about for a long term or a long time, is that your health uh, from a young age is determined by your immune system. Your immune system reacts to different invaders. Uh, it locks in information, understands which bacteria are beneficial, which are pathogenic, and develops defenses based upon its knowledge. It's a very, very knowledgeable and intelligent system, the immune system. It will actually look at what's going on what we're exposed to, determine whether those things are good or bad. If they're bad, it develops memories of that. So if that particular bacteria comes about again and affects us, then it has the natural killer cells and different uh, immune system cells to take care of that problem when it comes about. So uh, if you look at research done on childhood diseases, you'll find that the children that get disease again and again and again get bacterial infections, viral infections, etc., are kids that have been given, more often than not, antibiotics at an early stage in life. It actually kills the beneficial bacteria, and those beneficial bacteria keep the uh, bad bacteria at bay. It's almost kind of like a playing field. If you keep enough of the good guys there, they keep the bad guys out of, off the playing field. Um, you could do all sorts of analogies from football games to basketball games, but the basic fact of the matter is that good bacteria keeps inflammation at bay. Inflammation is the major cause of disease. Um, what's also interesting is that dysbiosis, which is the lack of good bacteria and the imbalance between good and bad bacteria that takes place in a sick individual, is exacerbated or worsened by high fat and high sugar diets. So if you want to stay healthy and keep those good bacteria active uh, that help prevent inflammation, you really need to stay clear of the high fat, and I'm talking bad fat especially, but also high sugar diets. So high sugar is one you, know, you really want to get rid of and, and focus on a diet that is rich in fruits and vegetables, especially rich in fermented foods. Um, my dear wife actually, when uh, just before we went on a trip, uh, set up our crock for the first time to make a beneficial bacteria concoction uh, of sauerkraut. Sauerkraut, you know, the cabbage, you've probably seen sauerkraut in the store. Unfortunately, the store varieties are dead. Yes, they've been pasteurized. So all those good bacteria and bad bacteria for that matter are all gone. Well, it's useless for you.
you might as well just eat regular steamed cabbage. It's not going to do any, any much more good for you. However, the beneficial bacteria generated from fermented foods that are truly fermented is really superb for your health. Now, um, probiotic supplements such as bifidobacteria, bulgaricus, acidophilus are very, very valuable. Um, at EnterHealth, we're coming up with a, a new um, probiotic supplement we'll, I'll talk to you about once we have it fully um, conceived and implemented and uh, in production. But it's, uh, it's going to be really exciting because the implications on protection of the cells, on restoration of health are huge. Now, many bacteria, good beneficial bacteria, have to be refrigerated and when they're shipped, they, they should be shipped uh, in a way that protects them from heat uh, and or extreme cold. Um, but the fact of the matter is those beneficial bacteria will do you a lot of good. They'll help in all sorts of health issues, irritable bowel syndrome, gastroesophageal reflux disorder. There have been studies done on all of these different disease states that show major improvement when there is administration of beneficial bacteria. I hope this was interesting. We'll certainly be talking more about the subject at a future date. Thank you all for listening and watching. This is Darren Craddock from Enter Health Botanicals with The Daily Dose.